This might not get you the biggest change in your skin. You might not see it straight away. I think if you're looking for like a long-term skincare routine, don't bother with Hi everyone. Today's video is about something a little bit different. I'm gonna do a brand overview of the Hada Labo Tokyo products. I'm Dr. Sapna and I love all things skin. So yeah, follow this channel if that's what you're interested in too. Let's get started. Are you really proud of my tower? This is literally on top of two books and my printer because the stool isn't high enough and I'm very proud that I haven't knocked it over yet. So let's see throughout this video how long that lasts. So Hada Labo Tokyo is one of those brands that was quite new for me when the sort of Japanese beauty and Korean beauty culture came to England and that everyone was super excited about all these Asian beauty products. Hada Labo Tokyo was one of the first ones basically focusing on hydration with hyaluronic acid as its kind of main ingredient. The brand is kind of pitched at everyone because it's just mostly focusing on hydration, not really any other particular skincare issues. The whole selling point is that apparently one bottle of the super hyaluronic acid lotion sells every three seconds in Japan. No idea if that's true. I was sent it by Adore Beauty when this brand came to Australia, which was only quite recently. But when I was in England, you could get it from Superdrug, which makes it really accessible. So yeah, I'll talk to you about each of the products, which I like and which ones I think are worth buying. Disclaimer, these products were sent to me, but Hada Labo haven't asked me to make any videos. All these opinions are my own. Throughout this video, I'll see if I can post the English or Australian prices for these products, as well as the links down below if you are interested in getting it. I'll start with the kind of most standard product Product that most people would have seen before and that's a super hyaluronic acid hydrating lotion number one now they say lotion it basically is a serum it's a super super watery you can hear it swishing <laughs> it's a super super watery hyaluronic acid serum basically all their products have something called super hyaluronic acid it actually took me a long time of googling and researching to figure out what they actually meant by that and it's something that they actually have trademarked it's basically a hyaluronic acid sort of serum that has multiple molecular weights of hyaluronic acid in it. But their sort of combination is trademarked and it's actually quite difficult to research what that means. But it basically means that it has different forms of hyaluronic acid at different molecular weights that will supposedly penetrate the skin at different levels. All non-prescription skincare can't penetrate the skin that deeply. Having different molecular weights means that some of it sits sort of at the top layers of the skin cells or of the keratinocytes and some of them will go slightly deeper. I don't know if you can see that, I basically have used one pump and it's a super, super lightweight, watery hyaluronic acid serum. I'll do another one to see if you can see it on camera. Ah, it basically runs everywhere. Ah, it's super, super runny. So if you really, really hate like big, thick, sticky hyaluronic acid serums, then this is your go-to. It literally feels like water on the skin. It just massages in really easily. And if you wait sort of a few seconds, massage it in, it doesn't, it's not sticky or anything. And that means it can pair well with whatever else you're using, whether it's other sort of anti-acne serums, vitamin C, or just moisturizer. Now this one is $17.99 at Superdrug. It's not the cheapest hyaluronic acid. However, this is massive. It's 150 mils. Most skincare serums you'll see will be like 100 mils or 50 mils. And this is 150. And you saw that you basically only need one pump for the whole of your face, maybe two. And because it's super, super watery, it just spreads so easily. So it actually lasts so long. So I don't know when I'll ever finish this. And I try and use it every day and just because it goes so well with lots of other serums and there's very little sort of side effects from using hyaluronic acid. But these bottles just last forever. The slight negative is that because the bottle's so big, it's so hard to travel with. So if this becomes your like go-to, it's a bit of a pain if you're going on holiday. The main complaint is that it's not the most like interesting, exciting product for me. That's because I use so many skincare ingredients. I get really excited by things that have loads of exciting packaging, that sort of thing. And there is really nothing wrong with this. And I would recommend to anyone who's quite new to skincare and just wants something simple and hydrating. But if you've got a particular concern that you're targeting this might not get you the biggest change in your skin you might not see it straight away but like I said it's a good hyaluronic acid serum now next up is the concentrated water serum now this is you can see a slightly smaller pot it's 30 mils and it's very different to the other hyaluronic acid serum that I just showed you this is much much thicker so you'll see on here I've just used a really small blob but you can see it's like a little gel it's stickier 
it's much, much thicker. Now this really reminds me a bit of the snail mucin serum that I use, because it's got a tiny little stringy sort of feeling to it and it's a bit stickier. It's far less lightweight than the one I just showed you, but having said that, I think it does sink into the skin. Now, I think it takes a bit longer to use. So my hand is still a bit sticky and that's been maybe 10 seconds. If you're gonna use this, give it a bit more time. It needs to kind of sink in and get rid of that stickiness before you're adding other products on top, especially if you're gonna end up putting moisturizer and then wanting to wear like makeup or something. It just needs that little bit extra time to stick in. Only another 20, 30 seconds, but you can't just rush into it. So look, it's not thick and sticky anymore but it definitely feels like my skin is a bit more like coated and a bit more glazed. I think it's because it has some glycerin in the product and that adds that slightly more sort of thicker texture to it. Annoyingly, this is not available in the UK. I don't know why. I don't really understand why different countries would have different sort of marketing and different products for a hyaluronic acid. I get it when it's for active ingredients because there are certain things the UK laws and borders allow as well as the Australian sort of legal requirements are slightly different for testing. But I would have thought for a hyaluronic acid serum it wouldn't be an issue, but who knows? So this at Adore Beauty is $35.99, which is what? 18 pounds pretty much. I still think it's a reasonable serum. It is much smaller than the other hyaluronic acid serum, which makes it less good value. I think there are better serums out there for hyaluronic acid personally. I think this is just a little bit thick and sticky for my liking. It's not like the snail mucin that just kind of sinks in. This still has left a slightly sort of thick film on my skin and I'm not sure if everyone would like that. However, it is again a bit more travel friendly than the big one. I've just run away to the bathroom to grab one of the most important products in their range. Now this was in my husband's bathroom. It is the Gentle Hydrating Cleanser All-in-One. I don't know why they're calling it an all-in-one. It's a cleanser and just a cleanser, but it's got some hyaluronic acid in it. But so do lots of cleansers these days. It's a cleanser. It's very hydrating, I really like it. Now this you can get in Superdrug and Adore Beauty. It's about 15 pounds and again, it is massive. So it's 150 mils. You can see it's been well used in my husband's bathroom and oh, I should have asked him why he liked it. Especially because I feel like if there's skincare that boys like, then it must be either really good or just really simple. So we should have checked. But <laughs> I really like it and that's because it's a foam cleanser, but it's not stripping. Most foam cleansers like traditionally were very very stripping because they'd often have a bit of soap in them and that would completely strip back my skin and make it really really dry or actually end up having a kind of reciprocal oil production effect. This however is not stripping at all. It is foamy and I'll see if I can film like a b-roll to show you but it's kind of just requires a, a couple of drops of water and then it foams really really nicely and it leaves your skin feeling very very clean now if you have oily skin or acne prone skin i know that so many of you are like addicted to having your skin feeling super super clean and you feel like you need that in order to unclog your pores i think this is a reasonable way to go because it's actually not stripping but it does leave your skin feeling clean I actually used to use it for shaving my legs and that's because the foam is really, really protective and works really well with razor blades for some reason. But I would recommend this to lots of people because it's just a cheap and cheerful kind of cleanser. If you're super bored of using the standard CeraVe hyaluronic acid and just wanna mix things up a bit, this is a good way to go. The 150 mils last quite a long time and for 15 pounds, you can't really go wrong. Now, this is where my opinions kind of change a little bit. Generally, I feel like all these products are very standard in that they provide hydration. They are not gonna dramatically change your skin in any way. But if you have a problem with hydration, then this is a good way to go. And if you are just new to skincare and need gentle products to kind of get you into a good routine, this is a good place to start. The next one is the Smoothing Anti-Fatigue Eye Cream. Now, this is used for day and night. Again, it has that super hyaluronic acid in it. So if you have very dehydrated skin around your eyes, perhaps you've gone in with too many more aggressive eye creams or other skincare ingredients that have just irritated the very sensitive skin around your eyes, this might be a good shout for you. I um, don't think I would sort of keep repurchasing this one and I'll tell you why in a second. 
For me, like I don't have an issue with hydration underneath my eyelids. I think it is really important to keep those areas really hydrated. But for me, I'm quite happy to just bring up my serums and other sort of creams right close to my eyes without getting them in your eyes, obviously. So I'm not sure you definitely need like a separate eye cream. So look, again, super, super lightweight gel. I think it's nicer than some of the other hyaluronic acid serums I showed you just because it's like not sticky at all. It just is more of a cream than a gel actually and it just kind of blends in super smooth. Yeah, perfect. I don't really think you always need a hydrating under eye cream unless you have an issue. For me, my issue isn't dehydration around the eyes. It's that I have hollows around my orbital bone and that's kind of natural with my bone structure and like I'm fully cool with that. But again, something like this isn't gonna change that. I think if you have an issue and you're dehydrated or you've kind of done something wrong around your sensitive eyes, this might be worth trying by just adding a little bit extra moisture. But you're better off just finding a really good moisturizer and being able to take it up to your eyes. Now this is available in Australia for $27. But in the UK, they have a version that I'll put on the screen now that actually has retinol in it. And now that is a bit of a game changer. I'm not sure I understand. Me neither. Now that could be amazing for underneath your eyes. Retinols that you might be using on your face might be a bit much for under your eyes. So now if you combined all the sort of hydration goodness and the creaminess of this with a bit of retinol, actually that might be really good for any sort of under their eyes wrinkling. They're never gonna change your bony structures, but it can be quite good for preventing those fine lines and wrinkles kind of coming in as we get a little bit older. Now, next up are two products that I think are very, very similar, and we might have to play a bit of a spot the difference game to figure out which one's better and which one's worse. Now, I have the moisturizing cream as well as the skin plumping day and night gel. Now, they are both day and night creams, gels, whatever you want to call them. They don't need to be used together. You can do one at a time. I would just pick one that you like and go with that. It seems a bit superfluous to use both. They are really, really nice, like lightweight gel creams. I'll be honest, like unless I've compared them side by side, I can't really remember the differences. And I've used this one almost till it's finished. I kept a little bit so that we could film this video. And this one I'm still just sort of getting through now. I feel like I was so unprepared for this video. I've just gotten up again to get a little spatula because any kind of pot and jar products I really like to use with little spatulas just so that they stay nice and clean and that. I don't know, I feel like they all last longer that way. Now these pots are both pretty generous sizes. I think you get quite a lot of product for your money as well. So I'll start with the moisturizing cream. You can see that I've used most of it up. There's not much left. It's another lightweight gel cream, not sticky. Goes in and blends really, really well. I probably took a little bit too much just for the size of my tiny hands, but I can just take it down to my wrist. You can see that it leaves your skin pretty, pretty hydrated feeling and it feels very, very smooth to touch. Almost a bit like the silicone-y like, primers that you can get. It just has that slightly soft feel to it. Now, I'll give it a second to sink in and see if, how long that feeling lasts. Now, this has glycerin, squalane and a bit of dimethicone and that's what's giving it this kind of soft feel to the moisturizer. It works perfectly well with all your other skincare ingredients. It'll work well with any actives, retinols, vitamin A, etc, etc. And you can use this sort of AM and PM. I think this is quite a good example of a cream that people who are scared of using anything too thick and oily should try. It's slightly sort of thicker than the CeraVe moisturizing lotion and that one sinks in probably a bit more easily this is maybe a tiny bit more of a tack and kind of finish of like that silicone feel to it compared to the CeraVe moisturizing lotion but I think this is still a pretty good place to start now you can get this in Adelaide and Australia for $36 but annoyingly you can't get it in Superdrug they have like four other moisturizers on the Superdrug website and they all look very very similar so I don't really understand which one is which when you compare the two brands it's a little bit annoying to find the exact one this next one on the other hand the skin plumping gel that you can get in Superdrug that is 22 pounds in Superdrug so you can see that there's still quite a bit in there so I've just taken a tiny little scoop of it you can see now this one feels maybe a little bit greasier than the other one maybe it's got a slightly higher sort of glycerin and squalane content to it and that's probably why it's a little bit extra pumping and hydrating it definitely feels more 
like thicker and when I describe that kind of silky feel on the right hand it's left an even sort of silkier slightly thicker feel on this hand again if you are a little bit scared of getting too many sort of like oil clogging ingredients this one might not be for you and maybe the lightweight moisturizing cream is a little bit better but this still sinks in very very well after a few seconds i think it does get rid of the tackiness but it does need a little bit extra time compared to like the cerave moisturizing lotion that I rave about because I like it. Again, like if you're interested in this range, if you think you need a slightly extra boost and a extra hydration, then consider the skin plump. The, I can't even say it. The skin plumping gel. But if you are like acne prone and just need a little bit more lightweight moisturizers, go for the moisturizing cream. I'll just moisturize any excess onto my neck. They both left my skin feeling pretty smooth, and they kind of have a slightly like matte effect to them. It's not like a lot of my very, very greasy moisturizers that will leave your skin looking very, very shiny. I kind of like that slightly shiny feel. I don't always love like this matte feeling, but some people do. And especially if you wear makeup, this is probably a very good place to start because it's almost like using a primer. The other thing that Adore Beauty sent me that I haven't got here because I used it on pretty much the first week it arrived is a sheet mask with the Super Hyaluronic Acid Serum in it. This is a sheet mask that is $7. Now I realized since I started going to K-Beauty stores, uh, basically W Cosmetics, which is just down the road in Adelaide, they have much cheaper sheet masks for about 3 or $4. So this is almost double that price, which I know it's still not a lot, but for something that is a single use only, I think it adds up. Look, we all know that sheet masks are essentially a bit of paper that are covered in serum and then you wear it and you feel like you're doing something for your skin. I like that. It's a bit of fun. I think if you're looking for like a long-term skincare routine, don't bother with a sheet mask. However, on like a special occasion or on a night where you're just kind of chilling, it is quite fun to use. This one was good. It is quite moisturizing. It did have a bit more of like a stickiness and tackiness to it. And I think that's something that we've noticed for quite a few of the products that they are a little bit sticky and tacky. And the sheet mask had exactly the same feel to it. There are definitely better sheet masks that are just hydrating. I think that if you're gonna do a sheet mask, I'd always pick a hydrating serum rather than anything else. This isn't their best product. It's definitely one of the hydrators over here. Remember that the point of a sheet mask, I think, is to basically saturate your skin in that serum. And I think that there is no point doing a sheet mask of a active ingredient. And that's because I think you will irritate your skin by using too much of that active ingredient. Instead, hydrating sheet masks are the way forward because you can't really get too much serum or hyaluronic acid into your skin. You will saturate your skin very, very quickly and there'll definitely be loads of like excess when you use sheet masks. But actually, if you're just looking for that hydrating boost, that plumping feeling, I always get compliments the day after I use the sheet masks. I think that this will give that to you. So guys, if I had to pick my favorite product from the range, I think that I would probably pick the cleanser. I think this is something that I would definitely repurchase. And the fact that we've gotten through it shows you that I definitely like using it. I think it's super, super friendly for boys, girls, acne prone, older skin, whatever different types of skin you have. I think this is probably your best way forward. It is the most cheap and cheerful. Quite close as a second is the very, very standard like lotion number one, super hyaluronic acid serum. This is great. Again, like I really feel like you're getting so much serum for your money and I think it is very well well worth it i just generally appreciate like brands that anyone can kind of pick up and know that these products will work in their whole routine without worrying too much about like interactions with other products irritation caused by your other retinols and all your active ingredients both of these products can just kind of go with anything and that's something that really appeals to me i think lots of brands just confuse consumers and you end up in this dark dark hole where you're using too many actives and you don't know what to do and ah but actually these products probably work quite well. I think I would actually probably recommend using them as part of like doing a reset from active ingredients. I recommended this a couple of weeks ago. I have a video about this. If your skin is over irritated and you kind of don't know what you're doing and you're getting like little red pimples and everything's going worse and you're getting confused, maybe these are a good place to start. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know this is something a bit different to other things on my channel, just because it's not like super, super sciencey, but these are the products that I like and these are the products that I'm using. So yeah, if this is a video that you liked and you're interested in seeing more brand reviews, please leave something in the comments below. You can list other brands that you want me to try. The other one that I have lots of products for that I'm tempted to do a review on is Medicaid. 
or maybe Votary London because I absolutely love those and I have loads of products from the range. So yeah, if that's something you wanna see, just let me know and leave me a comment or DM me on Instagram. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.